Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer today for April 12th, 2021. Glad that you are with me today. Let's go ahead and get started. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ has risen indeed. Alleluia! The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. God of all glory, we give you thanks that through the gift of baptism you have been crucified with Christ and united with him in resurrection. By the power of your Holy Spirit, let our lives proclaim the good news that we are dead to sin and alive to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Our first set of readings for today is Acts chapters 1 and 2. And we're also going to be reading uh, John chapter 1. And so I'm not going to do a whole lot of talking about these scriptures in this video. I'll do another video and, and we can get a little bit more in depth, but just so we hear the scriptures and then we can talk about them later, if that is something that you would like to join us for as well. Um, the Acts of the Apostles is uh, sort of part two to the, Luke, uh, the Gospel of Luke. It's the same author. And just continuing on the story after Jesus' uh, death and resurrection, what happens to those apostles, those sent ones, the, the, especially the 12, but those that God chooses for leadership after that. Um, so we'll just be going through that and looking in, and seeing what is going on in that. The other epistle that we have for today and this week is 1 John. This is written presumably by the same person that wrote the fourth gospel and is an epistle on uh, more than just gospel, sort of a, uh, an explanation, a, some thoughts on how to live the, the Christian life. It's a great one. So listen for God's word to speak to you. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen, after his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them over the course of 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God while staying with them. He ordered them not to leave Jerusalem but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon, the zealot, and Judas, son of James. Of all these were consistently devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers. Together the crowd numbered about 120 people and said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit through David told concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. Now, this man acquired a field with the reward of his wickedness, and falling headlong, he burst open in the middle, and all his bowels gushed out. 
This became known to all the residents of Jerusalem, so that the field was called in their language Helkadama, that is, field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, Let his homestead become desolate, and let there be no one to live in it, and let another take his possession of overseer. So one of the men who had have accompanied us throughout the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed two, Joseph called Bersabbas, who was also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then he prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot, lot fall on, fell on Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a, a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they, will, they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. 
being therefore exalted at the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you both see and hear. For God, for David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, the Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promises, this promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed this message were baptized. And that day about 3,000 persons were added. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship to the breaking of bread and the prayers. All came among upon everyone because many were wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the good will of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Then 1 John chapter 1. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, What we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life, this life was revealed, and we have seen it and testified to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from Him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in Him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with Him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But, If we walk in the light, as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So as I said before, I'm not going to talk a lot about uh, the scriptures. I'm going to use that in a different video. So let's go ahead and join together in our devotion for today. Today in the Mission Yearbook, Matthew 25 Church is an oasis in a food desert, feeding both body and soul. This picture is Countryside Community Church recognizes a need for residents of its rural California town to have access to fresh produce. With Matthew 25 as its guide, the congregation created the Sunday table, which combines worship and praise and the feeding of its community each week. Esparto, California is surrounded by some of the most productive and lush farmland in the nation, producing vast crops of vegetables, fruits, and nuts. Yet the town does not have a grocery store that sells fresh produce. For Countryside Community Church, which describes itself on its website as an old church with a new vision, this gap became an opportunity to live out its call as a Matthew 25 congregation. 
Many in the church noted the irony that a community so blessed with agriculture resources could also be a food desert. Grocery stores that stock healthy and organic foods are inaccessible for some Esparto residents due to transportation limitations and financial insecurity, forcing them to rely on processed and packaged food items from a local dollar store. That's when Countryside Community began reimagining what its food ministry could be. And it started with a conversation between its pastor, the Reverend Kathy McIntosh Smith, and ruling elder Jim Durst. The congregation was already operating a traditional food pantry, but with its lines and boxes of food, McIntosh Smith felt that it was somewhat impersonal and institutional. Durst, whose family has been farming in California's Yolo County since the late 1800s and who is now CEO of Durst Organic Growers, have planted the farm's first organic crops, having planted the farm's first organic crops in 1988, had an idea. He suggested that the church's food distribution become an extension of the Sunday worship service. They soon began envisioning a ministry that incorporated worship, hospitality, fun, and food. After worship, the congregation set up a bounty of organic produce and other healthy staples on banquet tables and encouraged those in the community to mingle and connect with them. The event known as the Sunday Table would gather people around the table, encouraging all to join in singing hymns like Amazing Grace in English and Spanish. There was also a time of prayer, and the Sunday Table quickly became more than just a time to disseminate food. Macintosh Smith and Durst say it became a celebration of authentic connection and community. The ministry also sparked partnerships with the Yolo County Food Bank, which provides additional funds for the purchase of frozen poultry and eggs to distribute, as well as a neighboring Trader Joe's grocery store, which donated its unsold goods to Countryside Community. The Sunday Table has also given church members and friends the opportunity to share and cultivate their unique gifts and talents. A congregant started offering classes on cooking and canning to the church members and the larger community. There are also plans for an avid gardener in the congregation to start, start a church garden. In many ways, the Sunday table revitalized us by giving us a common sense of purpose, said McIntosh Smith. For Countryside Community, established in 1923, Matthew 25 has always served as a guiding call for all that the congregation did. Prior to finding out about the PCUSA's formal Matthew 25 initiative in the spring of 2019, the congregation was already planning on adding the Matthew 25 scripture to serve the least of these to the church's website as a part of their mission statement. We don't want to just worship for ourselves. We can't just breathe in God's love without also exhaling God's love, said McIntosh Smith. For our church to have any integrity and authenticity, we know that that we needed to be grounded in service to our community. While the congregation might be small in numbers, its vision for the future is big. The church hopes one day to serve as a contextual education site for a minister or seminarian interested in learning more about the relationship between food and security, social justice, farming, and faith. Currently, the Countryside Community's multi-generational and economically diverse congregation is mostly white, but the Sunday table seems to be shifting the church's racial and ethnic makeup. McIntosh Smith says, The pastor has also seen congregational vitality increase as new faces join the mission of loving others. McIntosh Smith says that some of the Sunday table's most devoted vol volunteers first came to Countryside Community to receive food for their families. Now they have become ministries great, the ministry's biggest supporters. It's really a beautiful thing to see people who once came for help now becoming the helpers, said McIntosh Smith. Written by Zena Regis, member of Oakhurst Presbyterian Church, Decatur, Georgia. Today's focus is the Matthew 25 congregation. Let us also join in prayer for Robert Hay of the Presbyterian Foundation and Sarah Hayden of the Presbyterian Mission Agency. Dear Lord, thank you that no matter who we are, you love us. Thank you for your presence with us today. Amen. Now let us join together in our prayers. Satisfy us with your love in the morning, and we will live this day in joy and praise. 
Mighty God of mercy, we thank you for the resurrection dawn, bringing the glory of our risen Lord, who makes every day new. Especially we thank you for the good news of Jesus Christ for all. The wonder and beauty of creation. The love of family and friends. Opportunities for faithful service. Particular blessings of this day. People of God, for what else do we give thanks? We thank God that Julie, daughter of John and Linda, is getting around much better, has moved upstairs, is recovering well. We hold up before you human needs, God of compassion, for you have come to us in Jesus Christ and shared our life so that we may share his resurrection. Especially we pray for the one, holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. Peace and justice in the world. Those in whom we see Christ's suffering. Those who offer Christ's compassion. Particular concerns of this day. People of God, for what else do we pray? We pray for Josh, Julie's husband, who has torn a meniscus and is in quite a bit of pain. For Charlie, a friend of the Garlands, who's recovering from a fall that caused a brain bleed. For Marlin, a friend of the Garlands, preparing for surgery this week. For Steve, a friend of Bill's, who continues to suffer from COVID-19 symptoms and spent several hours in the emergency room. For John, uh, recovering from skin surgery. For Rebecca, my sister, who had an appendicitis and her appendix removed on Saturday, she is now recovering. And the mother of Laura, a friend of Louise and mine, who was hospitalized for diverticulitis. Diverticulitis. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. From the waters of death you raise us with him and renew your gift of life within us. Increase in our hearts and minds the risen life we share with Christ and help us to grow as your people towards the fullness of eternal life with you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we continue to pray using the words that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Now the grace of God be with us all, now and always. Amen. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Thank you so much for joining me today for daily prayer. Join me tomorrow for some more. 
like this video, share it with someone else, click on the subscription and the notification button, as well as going to our website, johncalvinchurch.org, for more information. Our liturgy today came from the Book of Common Worship at the Presbyterian Church USA, 2018 edition. Our, reading, or our readings came from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. Our devotion came from the Mission Yearbook, as well as Counting the Omer by uh, Teresa Horton, which I'll show you in just a second. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a blessed day. We'll see you next time. Today we are uh, beginning week two, which is thinking about restraint or contraction. And for Monday, we talk about the expansiveness or generosity of our restraint or contraction. Is there some way in which my restraint or conservatism acts as generosity or loving kindness? Is my restraint a loving kindness to myself? Were there times today when saying no seemed like an act of loving kindness?